yellow, cracked, big black hole, bad breath, gross. Did, did I mention gross? Yeah, not the fatness, not the beautiful blue water, not the beautiful dolphin. The ugly, yellow, gross teeth. That was January 2014. End of January 2014. Isn't that something else? That was Verdera, Cuba. That was the trip of a lifetime. Look at the picture I get back. It is June the 2nd, 2014. White. They're all there. There's no cracks. There's no space. Look at even the difference on, on the difference of how I look. Simply amazing. That's what six months later did. That, my dear friends, and my scared friends, and my dental phobic was the reason, my most poignant reason, why I did this. As I said, it's June of 2014. What, what a difference that many months make. What, what a difference in the smile that's on my face. I don't talk like this anymore. I, I, I'm not embarrassed to show my beautiful smile. Because it is. That's the first time in 30 years, my friends, that I can smile. And I'm very happy about it. I'm not covering my mouth. I'm going, look, look, they're beautiful. And, and, and I can't say anything more because that was the best decision of my life. I'm looking the best I ever did in my life. I have an awful haircut or anything like that, but I don't have bad breath. I don't have missing teeth. I can smile in a photograph. I just have a brand new granddaughter that she's going to see nothing but beautiful white teeth. I'm going to be able to kiss her because I don't have bad breath anymore. Just due to the gross infection and rotten food that's stuck in the holes and the cavities and everything else that was in my mouth. January of 2014. I had my surgery March 10th 2014. I can tell you I made my decision after I seen those pictures and I came back from Cuba and I just went, oh my goodness, how does my husband even want to go out in public with me? I can't believe that I let my mouth get that bad. I brushed every day, but I was so petrified to go to the dentist that I just didn't go. End of story. My whole life, I hated the dentist. I was so fearful and I have panic attacks thinking about going to the dentist. That's how awful it was. So I let my teeth get that bad. And they don't even look that awful in the picture. If you really did see them up close, they were nasty. I was even scared for the oral surgeon to open my mouth because I was so scared of how awful and horrible my breath was and that he couldn't have seen anything worse than what my teeth were. He just went, they're going to be gone, don't worry about it. He made me feel at home, he made me feel comfortable. I walked into his office the day of my surgery. I literally walked in. Didn't even think twice because I knew that was the last time I was going to have to endure this, the fear, the anxiety, the, the thought of somebody sticking a metal object in my mouth because my teeth were so bad. It was, it was all gone. Considering the Friday before that, it took me a half an hour to walk into the dentist's office, into his office, because I was so extremely frightened. If that gives you any indication, 
um, I, petrified is the only word I can use. It, just panic stricken. But today, I just took a deep breath, went in, he sedated me. I Literally, I don't even remember being in the chair. I don't remember coming home. I remember waking up a few hours later and my husband trying to get a boost into me. Make sure you have lots of boost or ensure. Boost is better. Strawberry is really good if you like strawberry. Um, you for a couple of days. Um, but you can't drink out of a straw because it will not make your, it'll make you bleed. So you have to drink it out of a glass if you can. Um, I can tell you the pain, if you're worried about the pain, I, I was extremely worried about the pain. I like, like pulling my hair like this almost brings me to tears. So coming, I think about three days I was in really bad pain. Other than that, it was just discomfort and oh my God, my teeth are gone. What am I going to do? I, I did make a little video like the day after my like my cheeks were probably puffed out this much. So I wasn't posting that only because I, I was a little vain. <laughs> I have to be honest. Um, I really needed to think of what I was going to say because I just kind of found Dan's on just literally looking for what do I do when I get dentures and it popped up and probably the best thing that I ever You people have been incredible. And there was an email from a girl. I won't mention her name. I'm sure she knows who she is because I'm going to link this video to her. And she was just, I can't do this. I don't know what to do. She asked me a million and five questions. She thought they were all stupid. And no, L, they're not stupid. You have very valid questions and your feelings are not stupid. Don't let anybody think that your feelings are stupid, okay? They're very valid. And it's okay to be scared. I was petrified. So you need a support system, first off. Um, find a good denturist. That makes all the difference in the world. Find somebody that's caring, compassionate, patient, and will understand your fears. Because you're not the only one that's ever gone through this. I know I'm not the only one that's ever gone through this. Hence, I'm making this video, and I know it's long. I am long-winded, but I just really wanted to give a good idea of what my journey was, and for all you dental phobes out there, like, I couldn't take my children to the dentist. The receptionist had to come and pick them up because the smell alone of the office would make me pass out and have a major panic attack. So this video is for all of you people out there that are just petrified and you think your teeth are the worst they've ever seen. No, they're not. They could be bad, but they're killing you if they're that bad. They're slowly killing you. You could be paralyzed. If you have problems with your legs right now and your teeth are bad, that could be a really big issue coming from your teeth. My legs and my left knee used to really bother me. Since I've had my teeth out, I haven't had a pain in my left leg. I can guarantee you that that was what was causing my pain. They told my husband the infection was about to kill me. So that alone just made the decision, you know, thankful that I made that decision. So as I said, the journey to here, the fear will definitely outweigh the, the end result because look at the, the end result is you feel so take a couple of days off work. You need to take some me time. You need to have somebody to wait on you for a few days. That's one thing I will say. Um, other than that, just enjoy the smile. You know, let the pain go away. Don't try and eat steak. Don't try and eat chicken. I know some people have said, oh, I ate steak the very next day. Well, I, I'm really happy for you, but I couldn't even open my mouth the very next day. So that probably is a little more realistic than I nod on a steak or I nod on some chicken because they do say pudding, potatoes, oatmeal. I lived on oatmeal for a couple of days and I don't ever want to see another in my life. And Boost. Boost was something that kept me going. My dentist or my oral surgeon actually had given me six cans and said, you need to drink these. So... You know, you need your protein. You need to keep your strength up too. 
don't try and eat a steak. Your mouth, you, if, if you're getting all of your teeth taken out, your mouth is going to be full of stitches. Do you really want an honest steak with no teeth in your mouth? I'm sorry for all of those people out there that have. Just my opinion. That that's incredibly, you have incredible pain tolerance. So just be fearful, but remember this is the end result. This is what makes it all worthwhile. So fear, yes, suck it up, buttercup. And in the end, it will be the best decision you ever made. I know it is for me. And I can tell you of all the different videos I've watched, it is the same for all of them as well. So people, enjoy the new smile. If anything, think of that smile. There are no stupid questions. We've all asked them. We've all been fearful. Just think you're Superman and go sit in the chair and just get it done if you have to. If you can afford the sedation, that's the way I would go. Don't worry about all of this other stuff. If you have the, the availability of the funds to do it, that would be my suggestion is do it under sedation. Then you don't feel a thing. Anyways, I, I, I just can't imagine going from this. And this takes a lot of guts for me to show this picture to this. Ciao.